What is up, design family? And welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. As always, so glad to have you lovely folks back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at and evaluating the art of packaging design for e-commerce fashion brands, specifically if you are in the sports or niche. I'll be giving you guys my experience as a fashion designer and as a creative director working with over 1,000 brands over the last seven years in terms of what I instruct our customers to do in order to create a memorable packaging experience for their customers. Why is this something that you want to do first and foremost? When it comes to an e-commerce fashion brand, you typically will not have a physical retail store in order to enhance the depth of your brand. Packaging is one of the key ways that you're going to be able to do this. One of the first things that your customer is going to receive from you, the first physical touch that they're going to have with your brand if they're a new customer is going to be with your packaging. If your packaging does not align to the vision the standard, the quality that you've set for your brand. You could have the best marketing, the best product design, the best product quality. But if the packaging does not align, does not conform to the aesthetic and the visuals that you want to create for your brand, well, you're out of luck. So in this episode, I'll be running you guys through four or five key things to consider in order to craft the perfect packaging and unboxing experience for your customers. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You're looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights. Camera. Action. Number one, first and foremost, is that your packaging should accurately reflect the values, the aesthetics, and the mission of your brand. A very good example of this would be if your brand was all about creating an eco friendly atmosphere and giving back to the environment and just taking care of the world that we live in. It would not make sense if you're using non-biodegradable materials in your packaging aesthetic and your packaging proposal overall. So make sure that your mission statement is aligned with the strategies that you deploy towards your packaging experience. If you're a brand that is all about vibrancy, colors, being extremely performant, then perhaps having a overly minimalistic and toned down and overly mature aesthetic for your branding and your packaging would not make sense. So make sure that there is harmony between your brand aesthetic, your brand mission, and how your brand packaging is actually being executed in the real world. Number two is to consider using unique materials across all of your brand packaging. At the end of the day, you could take the traditional route and use basic cardstock or basic paperboard for your hang tags. You can use basic plastic film for your polymethers. Sure, that's going to get the job done, but if you want to create a unique brand aesthetic and a packaging experience that's going to elevate itself above the rest, well, consider bringing in innovative materials. If you're a eco-friendly brand, you can bring in potato starch as a biodegradable alternative to traditional product sleeves. If you're a brand that's more about luxury, you can bring in silicone labels, PVC labels, frosted labels in order to add that extra touch to all areas of your tags. A good example would be a hang tag design. Let's look at a core hang tag design. Well, maybe we might have a cardboard base for that hang tag. We could use a velvet lamination surface finish. We could use a glossy surface finish. We could add multiple layers onto that hang tag by adding PVC acrylic to add separate layers of information. We could add a braided cord. We could add a tag to that cord that's made out of ABS plastic with branding on it. So even within each of these separate branding categories or product packaging categories, we have so much room to maneuver and to add that extra bit of spice to our packaging experience. Another space that you can truly innovate might be in your product sleeve design. Look at the closure systems. Do you have a traditional closure system? Do you have a Ziploc closure system that allows your packaging to be used time and time again? What type of material are you using? Are you using a EVA film material? Are you using a PVC film material? What thickness are you using? Is it frosted? Is it non-frosted? What types of printing are you using on these packaging items? All of these tools are available to you to mix and match and to innovate in order to create something that is vastly different than what the competition is offering. So. Use that to your advantage and make something unique. Number three is to focus on typography and color. At the end of the day, your packaging is also going to be a means of communication. Use the right typography that matches with your brand aesthetic and is also legible and allows your customers to get the necessary information out of your packaging. Make sure that the colors pop and also make sense for the packaging type that's being used. A good example of this might be a polymeter. So this is the overall bag that all of your product sleeves are going to be shipped in when a customer makes an order. It may not make sense to have a overly white polymeter that's going to be shipped out and that's going to be put into cargo planes, it's going to be put into whatever it is, and it's going to be received by your customers 
all torn up, all blacked out with a bunch of marks on it because the white that you're using just doesn't hold up in these scenarios. So make sure to use the right types of packaging and the right types of colors for the situation. Maintain consistency between the packaging sets themselves and maintain consistency with your core brand aesthetic. Consider adding small touches, small unique ways to make your brand packaging pop and to make it create a lasting impression in your customer's mind. Good examples of this might be personalized thank you cards. You might use a thank you card that has a personalized note from you that you sign at the end of each order. Another example is something that we created with our Spectre hang tag packaging. So the hang tag itself acts as an envelope that contains a user's manual for the clothing. And that user's manual was a way for us to showcase the best technical features to our customers and to highlight the things that we want them to notice and to appreciate about the product. We included a sticker in there. We included a thank you card. We also included a founder's card that was made out of heat stamped gold foil film just to add and to elevate that experience for our customers. And we knew that this was something that existing and competitive brands were not doing. So in our minds, this was yet another way to allow our brand to stand out and to create Instagrammable moments for our customers to encourage them to share what they have just received on social media and just to create a unique and organic buzz about the brand. So think of all areas of your packaging in innovative ways. Go through the user experience and the best place to start is with existing customers. See what is their unboxing experience like with your brand. Look at your competition brands. Look at how others are experiencing their unboxing experience. And then finally, just go out into the world and purchase stuff yourself. See what your own unboxing experience is, the things you like, the things you dislike, and use those to your advantage when crafting your next unboxing and packaging experience for your own brand. Number five is to think about shipping. At the end of the day, your packaging is going to be used predominantly to be able to ship out your product. Pretty much in most packaging sets, the basic packaging that I would recommend for most customers is going to be a hang tag. It's going to be a product sleeve in which your garments actually go into, and then a polymeter in which all of these product sleeves are going to be put into. There's some key things to consider with each of these different things. The hang tag. Well, what is the information included on the hang tag? How is it attached to the garment? What materials are you using to craft the hang tag? For the product sleeve, what is the size of the product sleeve? For example, the size of a product sleeve for a sports bra is going to be vastly different than the size of a product sleeve for a hoodie. In general, you're going to have different sizes of product sleeves. I recommend starting off with a small, medium, and large, or potentially just a medium and a large. From there, you need to look at your polymeter. You need to have the right size of polymeter, nothing too big and nothing too small. You need to have one that can fit an average order size for you without having to stack on multiple polymeters per order because that's going to rack up your shipping costs and it's going to give your customers unwanted financial burden. So make sure you're considering the entire shipping process. Also, look at the rigors of shipping. For a polymeter, make sure that you're using a anti-tear plastic film that's going to hold up, that's going to withstand the pressure of packing it with a bunch of items and being shipped out and thrown around in cargo planes. And ultimately, when your customer receives it, that way they can open it up easily and all of the garments in there are protected. They're not damp, they haven't been ripped up, and that overall, the experience is positive. The last thing that your customer wants is to spend a ton of money purchasing products from you only to receive them in a battered and bruised condition. And none of that is your fault because you've shipped them out with your carrier, but they have mistreated them in one way or another, and the products have not arrived in the condition that they should have arrived. So take the steps necessary to protect your products. Well, guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode. So to recap quickly, when considering your packaging, this is a unique opportunity to create a first positive experience and a long lasting positive experience with your customers. Remember to be creative, add creative touches to the garments, to the product sleeves, to the packaging, and ultimately create a packaging experience that aligns with the core values of your brand. Let me know if you believe that I missed out any key points in this episode, or also if you have any specific topics that you want to hear me talk about, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you are wondering how to elevate your own packaging experience for your customers and want my personal expertise on this, well, I offer one-on-one -on -one consultation calls for this, so please make sure to check the link in the description. My slots are limited, but if you do want to get on that call, check the link and we can make that happen. Guys, from the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.